the pseudo productivity is located in a construct, a totally fake construct called yield. And we're always told we increase yield. But what does yield measure? Yield measures the commodity. And you could have destroyed a very, very rich farm with a lot of biodiversity and grown a monoculture. And then you shrunk the plant, which is what the Green Revolution was. Norman Borlaug got a Nobel Peace Prize for shrinking plants, just so they could take chemicals. Because tall plants know how to stand tall if they are fed organic matter. But when those tall plants, which are our native seeds, which are designed for food for the soil, organisms, food for animals, and food for human beings, so the straw is food for the soil and animals, and the grain was for us. We never tried to maximize grain at the cost of straw because all of it was part of a food cycle. But when you apply synthetic fertilizers, which was the real objective to sell more fertilizers after the war, the native plants lodge because fertilizer weakens the cellular wall of plants. So they lodge. So they say, ah, oh, chase the plant. They made dwarf plants with hard stalks. Then they told the farmers, burn it. We brought the combined harvesters to take the grain. Now, if you look at that plant, it is not producing more. If you look at that plant in an ecosystem, it's actually producing less. That has been my life's work to show how when you take a biodiverse field and reduce it to one monoculture, and then you take the monoculture and reduce it to just grain that you extract, you're not growing more food. You're definitely not growing more food for the ecosystem. You're not growing more nutrition. So we shifted over these years in 95, I got fed up. And I said, this is a wrong metric. The metric should be health per acre, not yield per acre, because the yield only measures how much of nutritionally empty toxic commodities are leaving the farm. And they don't even measure what is it going for? Is 90% of corn and soya growing in the United States? Going for food, no, it's going for animal feed and biofuel. And it doesn't measure what did it do to the ecosystem. It doesn't measure the quality of the food, what does it do to your body's ecosystem, but worse, it doesn't measure the state of the soil. It leaves the soil degraded. It doesn't measure the state of biodiversity, you're creating biodiversity deserts. You're pushing species to extinction. And so my life's work really since 84 has been to understand how nature works in living systems. I try to understand how it works in quantum systems, but it helped me to understand living systems because at the end of the day, the base of living system is not mechanical systems, but quantum coherence at the highest level from the molecule to the cell, to the organisms, to the ecosystem, to the planet as a whole. Uh, I had a very dear friend, two very dear friends, uh, biologists from whom I learned a lot, uh, not re reductionist mechanistic biologists. One was Mei Huan Ho, who wrote a brilliant book. She's, she used to interact with me, because of my, with me because I'd done my quantum theory and she'd bring me this book where she was trying to understand, you know, the, the quanta in living systems. And she wrote a brilliant book called the rainbow and the worm. I don't know if it's available, but it is absolutely brilliant. Do read it. And another by an absolutely brilliant biologist, Brian Goodwin, who started the MSc Honours in Schumacher College. Brian wrote a book, Why the Leopard Has Its Spots. Now, because, you know, everything in the Darwinian thing was about survival and competition, etc. And basically, brilliant biologists showed that this is about development and evolution. It comes from within. It doesn't come from fear. It comes from the potential to evolve. So we have many, many, many ways of understanding how living systems work. And it's only the integrity of living systems and the integrity of relationships between living systems that gives us both food and health. So we shifted to measuring not yield per acre, but nutrition per acre, health per acre, 
And because I work with so many farmers, we've trained more than a million. We then work with them on participatory studies. How much has your field with nine crops produced? How much has your farm with agroforestry and crops produced? And we did a study with 200 farms on the basis of measuring nutrition per acre and not yield per acre. Because the yield would only measure a monoculture. And maybe in the monoculture you went from, if you shifted the whole system from maize and beans and um, onion and garlic and some greens and some millets into a maize system, you increased your maize yields from four to five. And meantime, the maize you grew lost its nutrition because native maize have much more nutrition. A lot of research is now showing that all native varieties have far more nutrition. I've just done a new blog called Reclaim the Seed, which has a lot of this detail of why native seeds, which were called low yielding in comparison to the fake high yield, are actually much more higher yielding in terms of nutrition. And weight is a Cartesian measure that's irrelevant to health. You don't, you know, if you made weight was a measure of health, the obese people of the United States would be indicators of a very healthy society. But obesity and diabetes and complications from that is in fact an indicator of metabolic disorders because of bad food. So our research has shown, and we have a report called Health Per Acre. It's available on the Navdanya website. For those who are interested, please go to the navdanya.org website. And on this website, you will both see the courses we offer through the Earth University I've created, as well as this report, many reports, um, a new report we've just done on Earth democracy. We did it for Earth Day, connecting the rights of nature to the rights of Mother Earth. And uh, uh, the rights of Mother Earth to the human rights. And looking at all the separations that have brought us to this brink, including disease pandemics, but also the different ways we can overcome it. And because I've done this work now for so long, we've shown how you respect the seed, you will have more nutrition in food. You respect the soil, you will have more nutrition in food. You respect the food itself, you will have much more health. Let me share with you some absolutely brilliant gems from our ancient Vedas and our Upanishads. They are more relevant today than when they were written. The web of life is a food web. The cycle of life is a food cycle. For it is an Anna food, it is indeed that all beings are born. And it is from Anna that they obtain the necessary sustenance for living. And having lived, it is into Anna that they merge at the end. Do not look down on Anna because we are looking down on food. We think it can be you know, junk food. How could we even reach the stage as humanity that the richer a country, the more junk food it eats. The poorer a country, the more real food it eats. What kind of indicator of progress are we working with? Do not look down on food, on Anna. That is the unviable discipline for the one who knows. Prana, you know, what is the COVID crisis? Why are people dying for lack of oxygen? It's prana. Pranayam, breathe in deep, yeah? Prana, the winds of life, are indeed Anna. And Sharira, the body, is the partaker of Anna. Sarir is secured in prana and prana is secured in Sharira. They depend on each other. And then, this is the web of life. All that is born is born of Anna. Whatever exists is born of Anna and in the end merges into it. The waters is created, the soil is created, the climate is created by Anna. What does it mean in contemporary scientific terms? That the cycle of life, you know, what is the web of life, but the flow of the cycle of life? What maintains the cycle of life? The nutrition cycle. So I have called food the currency of life. And we could then stretch this to say real food is the currency of real health. And bad food 
is the currency of disease. We've done a manifesto on food and health, and my 36 years of research on agriculture have been brought together in a book that's available right now in India. It's called Biodiversity Agroecology, Regenerative Organic Agriculture from Westville, and it will be getting published by Synergetic Press in the United States, uh, I would think in spring next year. You can look out for it. But we assess the cost from F uh, WHO data. We know, we know, here is food. You know, they call them lifestyle diseases. I call them food style diseases. And we know the processes, the published literature is all there to show the processes through which industrial toxic poison-based food is giving us disease. Toxic cause cancer. Look at all the cases in America around the issue of glyphosate and glyphosate-induced cancer. Annually, 2.5 trillion. Diabetes, 2.5 trillion. Bad food, that's all it takes to give you diabetes. Endocrine disruption, the toxic, 549 billion. These are the costs. And the costs too are from WHO data. Antibiotic resistance infections, because we're feeding animals in factory farms so much antibiotics. Infertility, you know, the younger generation, you know, for us having a baby, easy. Younger generations, I know very, very few young women or young men who have fertility. Infertility is costing 3.6 billion. Obesity is 1.2 trillion. Birth defects, 22.9 billion. Neurodegenerative diseases, 2.4 trillion. Autism, 171 billion. If you just look at the CDC data, the graph for autism is growing like that. And the tragedy is, the fake science keeps trying to blame it all on the genes, but genes aren't changing. So the percentage should stay the same. Why is the percentage growing? Because it's not about the genes. It's about the toxics in the environment and toxics in our food and the imbalance in our diet because the stolen harvest that I wrote about way back was more about how the harvest of, our, of the sea and the land was being stolen. I would now, add to it and say, this is the stolen harvest from our food where nutrition itself is being stolen from our food. And instead of nourishment, we are getting disease.